In the wake of this past year's horrific anti-Asian violence, many have called for more ethnic studies funding. But how did ethnic studies even come to exist? The civil rights movement of the 1960s saw major societal shifts as communities across the United States fought for change. In the California Bay Area, students of color realized that there was no curriculum on their own histories. So they formed a coalition to demand that their histories be taught. This coalition, first led by the Black Student Union at San Francisco State University and then spread to UC Berkeley, was called the Third World Liberation Front. Though students of color usually organized within their own communities, the Third World Liberation Front was a multi-ethnic group. It was a real aha for me, saying like, wow, you know, they're not Chinese, but we have similar experiences in terms of the dominant culture not validating who we are. They held teach-ins, developed lesson plans, and clashed with school administrators. Soon, community people and other student and teacher allies joined what became the longest and bloodiest student strike in U.S. history. And they won. This five-month battle and powerful behind-the-scenes solidarity work gave birth to the first School of Ethnic Studies at San Francisco State and classes at UC Berkeley. Today, Ethnic Studies is a deeply impactful way that students learn the real history of the U.S. There are programs in over 450 universities, but as we've seen over the past year, the work of uplifting our stories is far from over.